Put that beam on her then, bitch. Put that beam on her. Put that red light on me so I can show where you shooting at, ho. Put that red light on me. Come on, bitch. We pulls the fuck up. What's wrong with you? Girl. We on Facebook. We don't internet thug. We don't motherfucking internet thug. What the hell wrong with you? Hell. Welcome back guys, I trust you've been staying safe. Now, this case is a crazy one. Nobody saw this coming. It's a family feud between three cousins in the United States of America, specifically at Durant. And there was a minor argument where two of them pulled up on the compound of the third one. And before anybody knew what was happening, just like that, they had been shot by the third one. This is a true crime story that is going to look at what happened between these two women and how this senseless gun violence and loss of beautiful lives can be avoided. If you are ready for this true crime story, just buckle up and let's go. Now before we get into the video, kindly do me a favor and show some love to the two victims lost to this senseless shooting in the persons of Tateyuna Day and Carissa Job by typing in the comment section RIP Tateyuna Day or RIP Carissa Job or RIP to both of them. In as much as the circumstances surrounding their death are bizarre and could not be seen coming, these are still beautiful precious lives which have been lost. But let's get into the substantive issue and then see how we could break it down to try and see how these things could have been easily avoided. So the date is the 25th of April 2023 and two women would pull up on the compound of a third woman. Now before I proceed, I would like you to know that this is an ongoing case. Although the two victims are dead, the third person has been taken into custody and here the third person is the shooter. She has been taken into custody but has not yet been charged by the police because she is pleading self-defense. But per the facts of the case out there, these two women in the presence of Tatayuna and Carissa pulled up onto the compound of this third woman. And there was a heated argument. As you saw in the introductory video, one of them was on Facebook Live when they pulled up. I don't still understand why people see the need to go on social media live and show the aggressive things that they are doing. This is not the first incident of a shooting that has happened while someone was on Facebook Live. This is not to blame the victims, but I think that these things, they, 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 they need to be regulated by society to an extent. Why the need for social media population or people to see you going to engage in a quarrel or a beef? It's not yet clear whether the person actually went on Facebook Live just so she could stream the beef or the argument, but some way, somehow, she was actually on Facebook Live. And they got to this compound and a heated argument ensued between Tatayuna 
and Carissa Job and this third person. So it was a two on one argument. But unfortunately for Tatayuna and Carissa, they pulled up onto the premises of the third person. And this third person kept insisting that they get off her compound. And from the video, you could also infer and even hear her say that, get off my car. One of them was actually seated on her car as well. It's not yet clear what triggered this entire bad blood between them because, mind you, they are family members. So it's not yet clear what could be so serious between them to get them peeved at each other to the point that these two cousins would put up on their third cousin and the third cousin will also resort to gun violence to get rid of them in broad daylight for that matter. And it isn't even worse as it is. It got worse or it got even... What, what, what's the word? It just escalated to a whole new level where you would see that there is even a child on the premises. And yet... These women didn't pay attention to that. They kept going and the third person pulled a gun, shot these two whilst this kid was somewhere around in the house in broad daylight. I think that whatever it was, the gun violence was not the the, the, the solution. Because first of all, you are family and you don't see the two women attacking her in any way, at least physically. The only form of attack you see is a heated verbal exchange, but I don't think that is an equivalent of a force that requires you to pull a gun on any of them. Now, she's reported to be pleading self-defense. The little I know about self-defense, well, not in the US, but here in Ghana, is that the force that you apply to defend yourself from whatever you felt was a threat to you should be equivalent to the force or the threat that was being exerted on you. But in this case, if that is going to be the, 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 the case in this scenario, then I, I struggle to appreciate how pulling of a gun and firing fatally at these two people would become an equivalent of the verbal attacks that they brought to her compound when they invaded, so to speak. But hey, I'm not a lawyer, neither am I a judge. I'm just sharing my two cents on the issue. Unfortunately, however, the lives of Tatayuna and Carissa were lost. And I think that this is a senseless thing. One of them died on the spot, one of them died later on. But I think that this is a senseless killing. It, it could have been easily avoided. But she's pleading self-defense. And she's been taken into police custody but has not yet been charged. Keeping my fingers crossed to see how this will go, other reports were indicating that a grand jury is reviewing the footage to see whether they would have to charge the shooter with something. We wait to see how this case goes. But... Again, I empathize with the family because, mind you, these are three cousins from the same family. So it means that just at a go, straight out of the gate, a family has lost three people. Or let me say two people and the third person is hanging in the balance between a charge and maybe getting away with it because of self-defense being pleaded successfully. But either way, two lives have been lost from this family. And one may never be the same. So, all this could have been avoided. Maybe being a little more patient, being a little more tolerant. And sometimes I think that people also need to understand that other people are going through a lot of things. Even if you have a beef with somebody, if you have an issue with somebody, I think it also helps if... You consider the approach with which you bring the issue up. Sometimes if you see it's getting heated, you could try to de-escalate by just toning down or by just cutting it off and choosing a better time to bring it up. But hey, I'm not saying that these people are to blame for the loss of their lives, but 
I'm just speaking to the situation from the perspective of being proactive to avoid instances where it has to get to the point this has gotten to. My heart goes out to the family. I pray they get the strength to move on from this. But for me, I think that the shooter should have been more patient. There are other avenues she could have resorted to because in actual fact, the police had been informed that this argument was ongoing on Facebook Live and they were actually en route to the location. But before they were able to get there, this had already happened. And I think the shooter should have just been a little more patient and tolerant. She could have exchanged words and it would have ended at that when the police came, they would have looked into the issue. But I don't think the gun was necessary because from the video, you don't see any imminent threat to life or safety, which necessitated that she would introduce a gun into the argument. But again, people are going through a lot of stuff. I don't excuse her, neither am I quick to blame her. I'm just giving an analysis of this issue. What do you think about this whole thing? Leave your comments in the comment section. Let's have a conversation. As usual, like I've been saying, you won't see such things coming. You just have to keep an eye out, watch your conduct, and stay safe out there. Subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. It's free, but it helps us to spread our message. Hit the notifications button, share the content, and catch you another time.